Hello YouTube, uh, Lucas here with another album review, and um, today's album review is going to be on Death Individual Through Patterns. Now this album, I really don't, I don't have a hard copy of because this is requested by 555 I I'll just put the link into the description um, to his channel, um, and this is going to be one of my only reviews that I don't have a hard copy of the album because I just like having um, uh, hard, like hard disc copies of an album. So, I, I I really don't think I should do this, but I'm just going to do it anyway. For those of you people who aren't familiar with Death, which 99% of every metalhead listens to Death. Um, and the the 1% that doesn't listen to Death is probably seen kids because they don't know. Because they're p pretty close-minded, but I, I might be wrong on that. I might be. Because there could be some seen kids who listen to a lot of awesome music, so... So it, de it just depends. So Death is, of course, a death metal band from uh, Tampa, California. Uh, California. I'm sorry, Tampa, Florida, and they formed in the year of 1983. Now, now this album by Death was a. Uh, it wasn't really a death metal album. It was more of a technical death metal album because um in their releases of uh of their first album uh. Screen Bully Gore and their second album, Lever Scene, and, and their third album, Spiritual Healing, was like really like straight up death metal. And then when you get up to like human, human and individual through patterns, that was more of a technical, those two were more technical death metal albums. And then when you get into um, uh, Symbolic and and uh, Sound of Perseverance, that was, that was a progressive death metal album. So, so they were really like, like they. They didn't change their genres a lot, but they did change their genre throughout their career. Now, now Death is one of the only bands that I know that pioneered two genres because in Death they pioneered death metal and they pioneered technical death metal with this album with, with individual through patterns and human. They pioneered two genres: death metal and technical death metal. Now there is, they're probably one of the only bands that I know that pioneered two genres. And a band that pioneered two genres is like one Death is one of in my opinion they're one of the greatest metal bands of all time. One of the like because I'm not really uh I don't really like saying the the greatest metal band of all time because because that just insults all the other metal bands that came before and after them. So they're one of they're like one of the best metal bands to ever listen to. So if you don't listen to them, you are really you're you're really missing out on great great music. You're just missing out on on a lot of things. Now, this album was released on June fifteenth, nineteen ninety three, through uh, Relativity Records, which is like a, uh, which is like that's like the parent label of it is Combat Records. That's um, a that's a record label bef like before like during like the first couple of albums. But this was reissued by Relax Records in like the f in October of two thousand eleven, and um, and it had like a bonus two bonus sticks, which was like uh, which was like uh, what do you call that, like band sessions, like uh, practices and stuff like that. So this album ranges to be about thirty eight minutes long for ten tracks, and that's not really that like that's like pretty average for ten tracks because each track here is about. Three or four minutes. Like the longest track is, I think, track. Uh, I think track six, mentally blind, which is four minutes and forty-five seconds. So each song spans to be about three to four minutes. And this was, of course, like, like this. This producer was like the main producer of early death metal albums in the nineties. Scott Burns. He was a. Uh, of course, he produced this album because he's a legendary producer. He produced legendary, and I mean legendary albums. Um, uh, not by this band, but just in general, like they, he produced a lot of early death metal bands throughout the nineties, and and I don't know if he produced them through the two thousands. I'm not sure about that. I I might be wrong on it. So, so yeah. So this, the lineup for this album is really uh, is not really good, but I would say like uh, the lineup for this album, like the people in this album are like are are already known in the metal world but except they're like in really different bands. Uh, of course there's Chuck Schuldan and he's the founder of the band, he's guitar guitarist vocals and he uh, co produced this album. Uh Andy LaRock guitar, he uh you might know him from uh, King Diamond, which is a like uh 
new album band, like a new wave of British heavy metal, heavy metal band. And you have Steve, Steve Diaguario, if I'm, if I'm correct like that. I don't know if I pronounce it wrong or something. Uh, he plays fretless bass. He's just a monster on bass, especially on this album. This is one of his best works. And he's just an, an amazing bassist. And, um, he was in bands like Autopsy, Death, Testament. Uh, um, awesome bands. Now Gene Ho and then last but not least there's Gene Hoagland, which, which he he played drums in uh, Strapping Young Young Lad, um, uh, Death of Course, uh, Testament, Fear Factory. He's the current drummer of Testament, Fear Factory, uh, Death Clock. He's one of the two members of Death Clock. So so yeah. Um, the guitar work is is really really great. Like like I would. I would really recommend this album to a uh, to a death fan that loves um that loves their early stuff but doesn't really know their mid stuff because because this album is just really really amazing and the I told you the guitar work by Chuck and Andy is amazing Chuck is um is he he's a metal genius um Andy um I'm not sure because he he only played in this album because I'm I don't really listen to King Diamond uh, like. I don't really listen to them. I never really did. I never like I never really listened to them. So and Steve Diaguario, his bass work is awesome. He's one of I'm not a bassist person I, I don't play bass, but he is one of he's one of the the best bassists. Now now I said before, I don't I I don't say best bassist in the world because that just insults all the other bassists in the world. Now Gene Hoechlin he is a monster on drums. He he plays. If you if you hear his work on Testament's new album, if you hear his work on um on his Fear Factory, especially on the song Power Shifter, that that is really technical, and I just love it. So, what would I really give this album as a rating? I would uh I would give this a nine out of ten because this album is um it's really really great, but it's not perfect. It's not a perfect album. It's, it's um there's very I think I only listed one album out of all my album reviews, which is um that was ten out of ten. Uh, I'm not gonna say the review because it's uh, it's not really it's it's off topic. So now this album also has a music video for for uh, the philosopher, which was featured on Beavis and Butthead, which they commented and made fun of his vocals. Uh, they probably regretted that when he died when Chuck died. So. I um so my top three songs off the album will, ha will probably have to be uh my third favorite song is track three trapped in the corner really awesome song um my second favorite song is track two in human form that song is awesome it's amazing and my favorite song is um track eight destiny which is um it it has a acoustic in the beginning and then it goes all um aggressive and stuff like that it's really great you know so. So that's all I have to say about the album, uh, keep it metal, and uh, stay tuned to another review.